On the outside, the Heart Clinic is a charitable institution providing free health care to New York's less fortunate. But beneath the surface is a medical facility offering procedures most insurance providers would call unwarranted, radical, and mostly too expensive. But if you ask the clinic's founder, Dr. Elias Wortham, what it is he offers here, he'd say, hope. As Dr. Wortham places the stolen neurolytic scanner on top of a sick Amy Chen's head, she is scared, and rightfully so. But Dr. Wortham and the other doctors assure her that the magic helmet will help them find out why she is sick. Within the Avengers Tower, the team converges on Spider-Man, each one taking their turn to attack. Some attack by twos. Captain America warns him, Spider-Man, I'm giving you an order, mister. You will stand down immediately and submit to our tests. Black Widow is able to grab a hold of Spider-Man's arm with a plasma coil, but even so, none of the others are able to land an attack. Cap's shield is dodged, Wolverine's claws avoided, even Mjolnir proves to be too slow as it zips by the wall crawler. Inside Otto's head, Peter Parker watches it all, hoping that the Avengers will be careful. They may be fighting Dr. Octopus, but it's still his body. Uh -huh, not the face, he says as he sees Thor throw his hammer. Not the face? Who said that? Otto asks below his breath. With Spider-Man now distracted, Black Widow fires a shot at his back. Spider-Woman charges her venom blast and attacks him point blank, and Captain America slams his shield in Spider-Man's face, causing blunt trauma and knocking the wall crawler out momentarily. Prep the sick bay, Captain America tells the others. It's time we finally got to the bottom of this. Elsewhere, in Brooklyn, Carly Cooper stares at her board of Spider-Man pictures and periodicals while arguing into her phone. I have a pretty good idea who's really inside that suit. And I'm telling you, it's not Spider-Man. The problem is proving it, empirically, scientifically, beyond a reasonable doubt. Honestly, at this stage, I'm not comfortable telling anyone my theory, or even saying it out loud. It just sounds so ludicrous. But you know me. I don't go into situations like this half-cocked. I'm gonna need your help on this one. From me, the individual on the phone tells her. Cooper, it's because of you that I'm on a leave of absence. Why would I help you? One, because I didn't turn you in. Two, because you're a good person. And three, what if I'm right? Within Avengers Tower, Spider-Man wakes up on a med bay, surrounded by different types of scopes and scanners. After a number of tests are ran, the delegation begins. The team moves to a table and a number of screens with Spider-Man's brainwaves pop up. We have the results, Captain America tells the team. All our tests conclusively prove, with no margin for error, that you Spider-Man are clearly not a scroll, nor are you being controlled by a space phantom, the puppet master, purple man, or the controller. Spider-Man stands to his feet. Well, I could have told you that. Otto continues to stare at the screen and does, however, notice that there is an anomaly after all. Nothing to worry about, he states, confident that he is the only one to notice. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to examine some of this data firsthand. It's not often I get to see such a comprehensive look at my physiognomy. 
Black Widow obliges, saying that it's the least they could do after what they just put him through today. Spider-Man thanks Black Widow, but Captain America interjects. Don't thank us yet. This is far from over. Consider yourself on probation. What does that mean exactly? We're watching you, Spider-Man. Step out of line and you're fired. Spider-Man scoffs, but before he stands to leave, Black Widow attempts to offer her support. I know what this is all about, she tells him. You do? Not that long ago, you and I and the Silver Sable, we fought to save the world from Dr. Octopus. After Sable died on your watch, you changed. I read how you tried to kill the lizard, and now, with Massacre, you've crossed that line. Yes, that was a first for me. I've been there, and if you need someone to talk to, I'm here for you. You have read in your ledger now. I know how that feels. You think I feel regret for killing a man like Massacre? If that happens, I'll think of all the future lives I've saved and I'll sleep easy at night. It never works that way. Trust me, the past has a way of letting you know how it wants you to balance the books. You'll see. Natasha walks over to Otto and hands him the brain scans. I appreciate your offer, Natasha, and I will think on it. Otto slowly exits the building, and as soon as he steps outside, he is finally able to breathe. I can't believe none of them were smart enough to notice that deviation in my brain pattern. It's just dumb luck that Iron Man is busy gallivanting through space, and Giant Man's off somewhere playing with his toys. Thank God, the only Avengers on call were a bunch of button-pushing monkeys, who probably can't even program a DVR. Otto arrives at Horizon Labs and storms past his co-workers in order to make it to his lab while explaining that he needn't waste his breath on them. He needs to study his data immediately. But when his initial tests come back inconclusive, he decides that he will need a better scan of his brain. Fortunately, he knows just where to get one. Within the heart clinic, Dr. Wortham and Dr. Vargas prepare for surgery. When suddenly, the intruder alarm begins to blare. At first, the medical staff believes it to be the police, finally there to take their licenses away. Others are worried about jail time, and even fewer are worried about the patients. Everyone remain calm, Dr. Wortham orders. Alarm systems off. I'll deal with this as cardiac. Dr. Wortham knew that it was only a matter of time before this happened. But still, he doesn't understand how the authorities found them. Perhaps one of their patients, a family member, maybe someone on staff. Dr. Wortham begins to equip his suit when he notices a spider tracer clinging to his glove. At that same moment, Spider-Man breaks through one of the vents. Cardiac, I'm offering you this one chance. Give me what I'm after, and this all ends now. The wall crawler jumps forward and throws a punch at Cardiac. Let me guess, and that would be the Neurolytic Scanner. The vigilante dodges the punch as he pulls down his mask. Not on your life. Very well then, the die is cast. Spider-Man howls as he punches Cardiac straight through one of the walls and into the medical wing. They continue fighting through the room, crashing into staff and medical equipment. What in God's name are you doing? Cardiac shouts. Stop! This instant! Ha! 
You don't get it, do you? This is a rematch, and Spider-Man always wins the rematch. You maniac! Can't you see where we are? This is a hospital! Says the man firing his energy staff. Don't get angry with me, bumbling lout. I gave fair warning. This is all on your head. My, the neurolytic scanner. To Otto's surprise, he finds the scanner sitting on top of a young girl's head. He attempts to snatch the scanner away, but Peter Parker once again makes himself known, telling Otto not to do it. Quiet, Otto tells him. I will do or take what I want. Cardiac and Dr. Vargas plead for Spider-Man to stop and inside his head, Peter Parker is telling Otto that he is insane. Otto reaches out his right hand for the device, but Peter attempts to take control of it, stopping Otto mid-reach. No, he whines, I'm in the right. Retrieving stolen property. This belonged to Dr. Otto Octavius. Cardiac then makes his attempt to reason. Yes, and that's why I'm using it to undo his crimes. Saving a life that Octavius himself put in jeopardy. Last summer, when Dr. Octopus tried to blackmail the world, he gave us a taste of what it would be like with no ozone layer. For Octavius, it was a show of strength, a way to intimidate the Earth, but he never spared a thought for what the intense heat would do to those already sick and infirm. Amy Chen survived a car accident that took her parents and left her with severe brain damage. Spider-Man looks down at the young girl and mutters to himself, his global warming scheme. I remember that heat, that intense heat. It would cause terrible complications. That poor child, this is all my, I, I, I can make this right. Cardiac raises an eyebrow to Spider-Man, telling him that only Octavius could manage a feat like that. Spider-Man explains to him, Dr. Otto Octavius was a brilliant man and my greatest enemy. I've dedicated my life to studying his technology. I'm very familiar with this device. Just you watch. I'll map this child's mind down to its last neuron. I will repair all the damage and perform the surgery myself. Spider-Man adjusts the helmet, waking the young Amy. Spider-Man? You know how to use the magic helmet? Shh! Spider-Man hushes her with a poke on her nose. My dearest girl, I'm the magician who made it. Soon after, in the operation room, Dr. Worthy begins to have second thoughts. I must be out of my mind. I don't know who you are, your credentials, if you're even a doctor, or if you're just a man in a mask, says Cardiac. Otto scoffs as he prepares his incision tool. Spider-Man, your hand is trembling. Otto grabs a hold of his right hand and stills it, stating, It will pass. For the sake of this girl, I say, it will pass pass. A moment passes before Dr. Wortham asks, Spider-Man, Doctor, are you ready? Yes, it's time. Time to start balancing my books. After the operation, Otto and Dr. Wortham wait outside. Dr. Wortham tells him, you were brilliant back there. All the years we fought, I never knew. Under that mask was a man of such skill. I was wrong about you too. Look at all this. A secret underground base? 
Impressive equipment? Minions. Working outside the law, but doing good. I approve. In fact, anything you need or this place needs of me, all you have to do is ask. Thank you. Now, about the scanner. You need it for something, don't you? Only for a little while. I promise I'll return it. Then it's yours, my friend. Use it in good health. One of the nurses walks into the hallway and informs both doctors that Amy Chen has woken up and is requesting to see the two of them. The doctors walk into the recovery room and Spider-Man joyously greets the little girl. How are you feeling, little one? All right. They say I'm going to be all better now. I wanted to say thank you, Spider-Man. I don't have much, but... She holds up the stuffed doll. Mr. Pinky Penguin, I want you to have him. Otto, taken aback, tells Amy that he couldn't. But the other doctors assure him that they may have already found a replacement to him as they make the exchange of one pink penguin for one Spider-Man plushie. Back within his lab, Otto thinks to himself that he has never received a token like the doll before. He has never had this kind of victory. Being a hero, it will suit him just fine. He may have found the greatness he was born for. Inside his mind, Peter warns him, Yeah, don't get used to it, Otto. Just because you put one in the wind column doesn't mean I'm going to stop fighting you. I'm going to find a way back. No, Peter, you won't. What? Peter asks. You can... You know I'm here? I do now. I found you. You're the anomaly. All of Peter's memories I've kept in this head, taking on a life of their own. Time to put a stop to that. Robot. Ready my equipment. I'm going to perform a Parker-ectomy.